Okay, I've got maybe, what, like, four or five episodes until I never have to voice Larry again. Let's, let's just do this. Hello, hello, welcome back to P-Storm. I am Pluvius Lelone, and today we're playing Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. And last episode, it turned out that Phoenix is not dead, and we're in fact playing as Edgeworth, and we went to court, and we talked to a... <laughs> We talked to a cute older nun, and now we're going to talk to Larry. Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm not really sure what to say. Iris, we only have 20 minutes. There are two things which I need to ask you before we reconvene. All right. I'll help you in any way I can. First, about that night. You really didn't go to the inner temple, correct? The last witness claims to have met and talked with you in the training hall. Either you or Sister Bikini is lying. Mr. Edgeworth, it's just as I said yesterday. Until the incident occurred, I was in my own room in Hazakura Temple. Very well. The second thing, then. That night, the temple snowmobile was used in between the time Sister Bikini returned to the main hall and when she bore witness to the murder. Sometime between 10.30 and 11pm that night. Were you the one who used the snowmobile? There is only one key for the snowmobile. The only person who could have used it was me. So it was you. But why? What made you go out onto Dusky Bridge? I'm sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. Iris. I can't tell you about that yet. Yet? Not until her safety is confirmed. Huh? The safety of the Acolyte? The Acolyte, huh? She must be talking about Maya. Iris, look me in the eye and tell me the truth. Did you kill Elise Donim? No matter who or what may come, I could never take a life. As I thought, no psycho locks. Very well. It's my job to get to the truth. You'll discover this for yourself soon enough. Court will now reconvene. Miss Von Karma, where's the witness? During the break, a man was detained for suspicious behavior in the gallery. Suspicious behavior? He was sketching something very intensely. Dare I ask what the witness was sketching when he was detained? He drew a terrifying woman onto the demonic face, a vicious whip, and a huge fucking donk. I can only presume that its intention was to capture you. <laughs> anyway, it's time to drag this pathetic excuse for an artist before the court. Lois Donim, I hope you're ready. Get in here. It would seem that whip is going to see plenty more use today. Ouch! Your sketch is in contempt of this court. My dumpy is not that big! Hey! I was just artistically writing- <laughs> You tried to run away from the bailiff who was trying to hand you your subpoena, correct? Look, I'm nothing but a fledgling artist, training out in the mountains! I'm only down here in the city because I ran out of green paint. Well, to use the technical color for the term- To, <clears throat> to use the technical term for the color Viridian- Larry, there isn't an art store now. It, or this isn't an art store now, is it? I know. I graduated junior high. Okay. Look, art is all about working in the fields, isn't it? Working in the fields? I presume he wanted to say field work. I hope. That's it. Thanks, buddy. It's kind of sad that I was able to understand his mangled train wreck of a sentence. I just happened to stop in here and found a wonderful new model. 
so see? I've got nothing to do with this trial. At all. I expect all your faces to be red when you realize this mistake. Bright red. Or, to use the tactical term, Crimson Lake. Ouch! <laughs> Stop your pathetic blabbering and testify like a man. Refrain from whipping me, Miss Von Karma. Cross-whipping is as bad as cross-checking. Witness, that was all your fault. Testify now! Uh, this is too much for me. I was at the lodge out in the mountains, looking up at the stars that night. I walked to the bridge a number of times, but... I didn't see a snowmobile. I didn't see anyone at the bridge that night, either. The girl, the girl I was waiting for didn't show up. My teacher died on me. I'm all alone now. Aren't I, Edgy? Witness, please refrain from talking directly to the lawyers during your testimony. I'm just a nobody. Nothing but a small, worthless man, aren't I? Why wasn't I asked for my name and occupation? Or anything else? Mr. Edgeworth? This man seems to have quite a severe inferiority complex. He's recently been the cause of numerous incidents. I think he's finally realized for himself just how much of a nuisance he has been to other people. Yeah, that's right. I'm behind everything. Every case. Watch out, okay? Just touching me will make you eternally unhappy. Well then, let us proceed with a cross-examination. With no touching, thank you. We can delve into other details at a later time. Hold it. Whatever is the matter, Mr. Edgeworth? This one single statement is so full of contradictions. For a moment there, I thought I was going to collapse. Hmm. So, witness? Any ideas to where these contradictions in your testimony lie? Depending on your answer, I may stay my whip. Okay, give me a minute. Well, I was it was snowing that night, so I couldn't have possibly seen the stars. That rundown shack is hardly a lodge, is it? And even if the stars could be seen, it isn't like I was there to look at them, right? See? You can do it if you try. <laughs> Ouch! There's only one issue here. What you saw what you saw at Dusky Bridge. Hold it. A number of times. How many? Maybe five times? I would once every twenty minutes. Which means you spent almost two hours at Heav Heavenly Hall that night. You bet. Real love is about waiting with your heart in your hands. Love, you say? It was this man's intention to summon the defendant to the small shack. Using this blackmail letter. Blackmail? No, no, that was simply a product of overflowing love. <laughs> You huffy, puffy, loosey, goosey excuse for a whimpering, whining voice of a witness. So, what did you see? I hope for your sake you saw a snowmobile. You huffy, puffy, loosey, goosey excuse for a whimpering witness. or whimpering, whining wuss of a witness, eh? Um, well, you see. Being called those names doesn't seem to bother him at all. Larry, you really did you really didn't see it? Hey! No need to hit your desk! I can hear you! I didn't see it! I didn't see a snowmobile! Larry, say snowmobile for me, please. Snowmobile? If you truly have nothing to hide, then why are you stammering like you just flew over a cuckoo's nest? Shut up! What is this? 
I don't know. Don't ask me. Seems that we'll need to start from a more obvious contradiction. I'm going to strike the blow that will finally get him to spill the beans. Uh, I think I might... Okay, yeah, I, I still have the walkthrough open. All right, well, we'll press the last statement before I uh, present evidence. You didn't meet anyone? That's right, because I've got nothing to do with this. And I'm just here to buy some Viridian paint, okay? Come on, I expect to see those crimson leg faces now. It would appear that simply pressing him isn't going to be enough, Mr. Edgeworth. Indeed. It seems that he's going to claim to have nothing to do with this to the end. I don't want this guy to cost us any more time. I need to slice through his obvious contradictions and keep things moving along. Larry Butts. I can understand why you might want to throw your old life away. You're pretty pathetic, and you cause all sorts of trouble. I'm sorry. But, having realized just how much of a nuisance you have been, that could be considered a step in the right direction. Edgy, are you trying to console me? It certainly doesn't sound that way to me. However, I cannot forgive you for simply turning away from the incidents you create. Well, you're totally pinning this on me. Now then, let us talk about the night of the murder. Sister Bikini, after seeing the murder took place, asked Phoenix Wright to report it. Thus, he headed for the public phone by the bridge. There, he happened across a certain nefarious individual. You, Larry Butts. That's right, me, in the flesh. Hmm. Listen carefully, witness. It doesn't matter if you change your name. So long as you remain pretty pathetic, you'll continue to cause these incidents. That reality will not change. But what do you want me to do then? Larry, what you need to do is change your inner self. But for now, what you saw that night... Testifying truthfully about this one issue is all I need from you. Edgy, I... I think I've finally woken up. Well, I guess I can still be sleeping. But anyway, I'll do it. I'll testify. Well, I'm not sure this will go especially well. I'll ask again then, witness. What did you see on the night of the murder? I went to the shack at around 9, so it would have been around 10.30 p.m. I was lying under my bedding when a white flash almost blinded me. I looked out the window, and Dusky Bridge was on fire. There was still some thunder, but I went right away to check it out. That's when I ran to Nick. Hmm. You certainly saw quite a lot, didn't you? So, what happened to the bridge after it caught on fire? It was like me after a three-day stint chasing a girl. It totally burnt out. Like, almost totally gone. I mean, trying to cross the burning remains was what caused Nick to fall. What did you say? Oh, don't worry. It's nothing life-threatening. He just caught a cold. I never know what that man would... I never know with that man whether he should be called lucky or unlucky. Now, Mr. Edgeworth, please commence with your cross-examination. What did you do out there in the cold for an hour and a half? Well, if you really must know, that was busy getting excited, I guess. Hmm. Excited? Dare I even ask? I set the meeting time as 10 p.m., right? So I figured I'd rub one out until then, if you catch my drift. 
So you were beating your brush the entire time? Because they never arranged to meet in the first place, did they? Shut up! Don't go picking my fond memories apart! Anyway, I was getting a little worried. I thought maybe Iris had lost her way. So every 20 minutes or so, I went out, on, went out to the bridge. But I didn't see anything particularly suspicious. They didn't have anything else to do, so I went back to the shack to wait for her. This light was, of course... Lightning. Like... Kapow! Like a slap from Naomi, honestly. A big bada boom! <laughs> or a little like that? Uh, that's more like a punch from Miranda. Witness, did you actually see the lightning hit the bridge? Well, that was a bit startled by the flash of light, so... Seeing that, what did you do? What do you think? I was burning up as well, from the fire in my heart! And that's why you went to take a look at the bridge. Well, to be honest... It was freezing cold, so at first I thought, forget it, I'm not leaving my covers. But it pretty much stopped snowing, so, I don't know, I changed my mind. Hmm... I'm not sure I care for the forget it attitude you had at first witness. You said right away, but exactly how long after the strike was that? Hmm... The lightning fell and then the bridge caught on fire. Maybe around five minutes? I mean, I suddenly thought, gotta go check this out! How far is this small shack you were, in f you were in from the bridge? Hold on, well, it had pretty much stopped snowing. I guess about a five minute walk? And how did Dusky Bridge look when you got there? Like I'd recovered a piece of my childhood. I mean, not even the bonfires kids make during school camping trips can compare. Well, should I press him for a little more info? Larry, let me ask you one thing. What is it, Edgy? What's with the serious face? Why didn't you call anyone? Huh? What do you mean? Normally, when faced with a towering inferno, one would try to tell someone. There's a public phone right at Dusky Bridge, correct? Well, of course I thought of doing that. So then, let's hear why you didn't. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. A reason... my reason... It isn't that I didn't try to tell anyone, I just didn't have time to, okay? I arrived at the bridge and then Nick showed up less than a minute later. You claim to have arrived at the bridge at the same time as Wright? Yeah. I thought, I'd better tell someone about this. But then Nick came up yelling about murder. It totally made me forget about the bridge. The fire was pretty much out by then, anyway. What's this feeling? I suddenly have a terrible case of unease. It was after contacting the, the police that Phoenix Wright fell from the bridge, correct? Yeah, that's pretty much it. More or less. He told me about the burning bridge yesterday. But there's still something that doesn't quite fit. It looks like, despite his change of heart, Larry isn't telling us the whole truth. Objection! Your very existence being a contradiction, I'm not sure if you can grasp this or not. What the hey, Edgy? You sound like some sort of alien! But your testimony is conclusively contradictory. The problem here is time. They've never been the best timekeeper, you know. Three minutes after Billy leaves on foot, you follow him on your bicycle. How long does it take for you to catch up with him? Terrible at those. This is much more simple. You saw the lightning strike Dusky Bridge. 
and immediately went to see what had happened. Is this correct? Yeah, well, there were... I wasted about five minutes first, but more or less. I have the weather data from the night of the murder here. According to this, the lightning fell at 10.45 p.m. You say it takes less than five minutes from the shack to Dusky Bridge. Meaning you probably got there at around 11 p.m. That all sounds about right, I guess. And then Nick showed up and did his falling act. That is impossible. What do you mean? 11 p.m. is when the murder occurred in Hazakura Temple. Thus, Wright was still there in the courtyard. There's no way that Larry could have encountered him at Dusky Bridge at that time. Uh, excuse me, uh, I have an objection. You do? Edgy, how many times do I have to say this? I'm not Larry, I'm Larice Donan- It has not been proven that the murder occurred at 11pm. The sister only said around 11. In which case, it would st it could have been earlier than that. Watch your footing there, Miss Francisca von Karma. The slope ahead is slippery. For there's no way that Wright could have been at Dusky Bridge at 11pm. And why not? It is clearly written here in the weather data report. It took around 30 minutes for the bridge to burn out. Therefore, the bridge must have been burning until at least 11.15pm. Which means that what exactly? Wright did not see the bridge while it was being consumed by the flames that night. In fact, he did not arrive on the scene until after the flames had died down. Larry. You arrived at the bridge at 11pm, but Wright did not make it there until at least 11.15. I suggest you stop hiding things and tell us the whole truth. Now then. What happened during those missing 15 minutes? Uh, I feel like I just got brutally woken up by toilet splashback. I guess I was still sleeping after all. Order! Order! <laughs> So there was a missing 15 minutes prior to meeting Phoenix Wright. I hardly see that as much of a problem. Yeah, not much of a problem at all. Really? The bridge is burning before he arrives, and there's a phone next to it. Why then did you not report the accident? Yes, witness, why didn't you? Were you there simply to watch the bridge burn? And therein lies the problem. For even the bridge had burnt out, for, for even after the bridge had burnt out, he was still there. Staring into space, this witness didn't even attempt to fulfill his civic duty. That's what it sounds like. Ah, but this is Larry we're talking about, and he, even he is incapable of being so stupid. Which means there has to be a reason for his inaction. Edgy. I think it's about time I got serious with you, dude. Just as I thought. You've been playing with us all this time. Listen, I was rubbing a mad one out, okay? I'm gonna tell you everything. You sure you wanna hear it all? Y yes. I may really say it this time. Everything. <laughs> then say it. Very well. I have a terribly bad feeling about this, however. Let's have the witness finally give us the whole truth. Now, for this 15 minute gap, what were you doing, witness? Your Honor, I was gooning. I'm a donim. I'm an artist. What do you think I was doing? Sketching in front of the bridge. I was whipped up into a frenzy of art. The shock and awe that I was feeling, I transferred it all directly onto the page. Before I realized it, the flames had gone out and then he came running up. Hmm. 
I suppose artists can be strange folk. That's right. I'm willing to sacrifice everything in order to draw the perfect sketch. Including the truth from the sound of it. Mr. Edgeworth, has this removed the last of your doubts? Not at all, Your Honor. One very large doubt still remains. And what would that be? This is a surprisingly believable story, especially considering the source. So why did he think he needed to hide it from us until now? I intend to drag the reason out of him. Ha ha ha! You'll regret this, Edgy! Tell us, Larry. My name is Larice. Get it right! Mistakes like that are what keep you from being popular with the ladies like I am. Just who exactly are you? I'm Larice Donham, apprentice extraordinaire. That's what he calls himself in any case. Then you are an artist? Of course, I'm an artist, the real thing. Yet again, that's what he calls himself. Names mean nothing. There's only one issue I care to discuss. What were you doing? That is a very big issue indeed. I was cranking my hog! Sketching? That burning bridge? The burning bridge and everything that came with it! What? Came with it? You wanna hear this from my lips, do you, Edgy? You'll regret this. That sketch of mine is... Enough. Just take that ridiculous sketch of yours out already, witness. What are you talking about? I don't know what you mean. That does indeed appear to be the fastest solution. I'll leave it to you, Mr. Edgeworth. What should I do? I've got a terrible feeling that the instant this sketch is revealed, the entire world may be changed by what is depicted there. Uh, yeah, look at the sketch. I think. Yeah, Larry. I wonder if you should show us your sketch. Well, I wonder if you could show us your sketch, please. Well, well. Even I couldn't have imagined it would turn out like this. Imagined what? That Larice Donim's debut would take place here today like this. Ow, ow, ouch! Show it. Now. Okay, but steal yourselves. This is the world of Larice Donim. Uh... Um, well, so this, this is Dusky Bridge, correct? C quite a large bridge, isn't it? Your response, Miss Von Karma? Yes, well, it's a better drawing than I expected. Isn't it? I struggled to reproduce those flames. I really did. Yes, I'm sure you did. <clears throat> this is going to get ugly. No one has the courage to bring it up, it seems. This mysterious flying object. Larry. What? The burning bridge is fine. But what is that unfortunate looking figure? Ah, oh, you spotted that? I thought you might. However much I might want to ignore it, I can't. It's Iris, of course. Iris! I wish she'd take better care of herself. We have to plan for her future, you know. What would have happened to her had she injured herself flying like that? Larry, please, answer this next question honestly. Okay. Are you really claiming to have seen this? Are you claiming to have seen the silhouette of the defendant flying over a bridge that was engulfed in flames? Yep, that's what I saw. That's why I drew it. I'm an artist. A real artist. Uh, you... Hi! The girl 
she's really high up in that picture. Ugh. What was that for? This is all a bad dream. I was hitting on the cheek to test that theory. Please whip your own cheek from now on if you wish to test your wild theories. Anyway, no court of law will ever acknowledge that people can fly. Actually, there is some precedent for this. She was flying pretty high, my sweet Iris. She was about 30 feet above that bridge at least. There was really something to see. This has to be some kind of mistake. Mr. Edgeworth, please bring the witness back down to Earth. What? Me? This witness is your friend, is he not? Accessory to foolishness, Miles Edgeworth. Let us get back to the cross-examination. By force, if necessary. Mr. Edgeworth, I expect you to expose the obvious contradiction here. Yes, Your Honor. Looks like I've got another reason to remember this moron. Well, what did you think of my debut piece? Get that thing away from me. Now hurry up and cross-examine him. I saw Iris flying, her white hood fluttering. Larry, what did you really see that night? Not that I particularly care. In your position, that's just being irresponsible. I, I drew exactly what I saw. They'll give you a whole dollar that it's the truth. If that is truly the case, then there's one thing that we can say for certain. What might that be? That the person who flew over that bridge could not have been the defendant, Iris. What? What do you mean? I don't understand. <laughs> a foolhardy folly of a foolish statement by an equally foolishly foolhardy fool? How exactly can you make this claim? Tell us, Larry. According to this picture, the individual whom you say you saw was wearing a hood, correct? Of course she was. That rundown shack is quite away from the bridge. The hood is what told me this floating angel was my Iris. The hood is my darling Iris, and Iris is my darling hood. Ugh. It seems there are bigger fools in this world than the one at the defense's bench. Larry, there's something you need to be made aware of. On the night of the murder, Iris wasn't wearing her hood. She had given it to Wright as a gift. Are you going to change your story now? Perhaps suggest it was Wright who took flight? What are you talking about? I think you understand what I mean just fine. Why? Why did Nick have Iris's hood? What? Edgy, what's going on with Iris and Nick? Why you Nick, you dog? I do believe that this unbelievably mysterious sketch is destined to disappear, discredited, and discarded straight into the garbage. <laughs> what is it now, Witness? It feels like they've been waiting 25 years for this very day to come. Edgy, today is the day I get to completely stupefy you. What? What is the meaning of your outburst, Witness? I hate to have to do this, but I have some definitive evidence. Definitive? Evidence? Iris did indeed come flying over the burning bridge. And I, Larice Donham, shall prove it. I didn't expect to ask this again, but we shall be needing your testimony once again. Tell us anything you know concerning the defendant as depicted in this sketch. And show us your evidence that this nightmare was actually a reality. 
Okay. I hope you're ready, Edgy. Because I'm going to feed you a whoop whopping serving of pain. You've been serving us a whopping serving of pain this whole time. Trust me. When I reached Dusky Bridge, she was already gone. I was so worried, so I frantically searched all over for her. That led to me finding the beautif a beautiful crystal sphere, half buried in the snow. I'm sure that Iris was simply wearing a spare hood. After all, no one else could have lost a crystal sphere that night. A crystal sphere? This one. Pretty, isn't it? But finders keepers. That sphere, where did you find it? Let me see. Around here somewhere. Looks about right. And it was half buried in the snow. Didn't pretty much stop snowing by then. But there was still some falling as I there was still some falling as I walked to the bridge. Hmm. The court accepts this crystal sphere. That's mine, okay? Don't want it back afterward. Hmm. There's something on it. Oh my. It's blood. What? Blood? You ready, Edgy? By tomorrow morning, you'll be calling me Master Larry. Yeah, I like the sound of that. No one's going to push me around anymore. Didn't you want to be called Laurie Stoneham only a few minutes ago? So you went to the Burning Bridge. That's right, to meet Iris. She actually flew to get me. The least I could... Ugh. The least I could do was meet her halfway. But the defendant was not at the bridge when you got there, you say. I guess she went back to Hazakura Temple. She's a girl, after all. She must have wanted to look her best. It must be lovely to live in the fantasy land of Larry's mind. Actually, it's so depressing that I can't even work up the energy to point. So what did you do next? So you searched all over for her. She was flying pretty high, you know. I thought maybe she slipped on her landing and got hurt. Hey, it was more than possible. Also, when I headed out to the shack the first time, I was snacking out a banana. I was pretty sure I threw the peel away somewhere around there, so, you know. Can one guy really be this stupid? So, did you find any signs of her so-called landing? Hmm, I don't really remember. I kept on falling over myself and kind of lost it for a while there. You fell over yourself? Yeah, the snow was deep and there was even a banana peel out there. Yep, there's Stupid and then there's Larry Potts. The short of it is that you didn't find any signs of her landing, correct? Then what happened next? Half buried. It was sitting in the snow with a little, with a little gather on top of it. It was very hard to spot, actually. I mean, it was dark out, too. I'm impressed. You did well to find it. No matter what you think you when you look, no matter what you may think when you look at me, I'm a pro, a genius security guard. I used a pen light I borrowed from my company to help it in my search, and it sparkled really brightly as if it was saying, "Here I am" to me. It does indeed look very much like the crystal sphere on Iris's hood, but need I remind you that she was not wearing a hood that night? Each nun is assigned their own hood. They're assigned only one. I don't know anything about that, okay? Then Iris is special, alright, dude? Even if she did steal a spare hood, I'll forgive her. This is getting us nowhere. Our destination for the day, it seems. However, 
This crystal sphere was found near the bridge. That is a fact. If it didn't come from a hood, where could it have come from? That is the question I aim to answer. Let me confirm this one last time, Larry. The reason you thought that this was Iris are the hood and this special sphere, correct? That's right. My gut is never wrong. I met that old bikini the next morning. Then her crystal sphere was still there, safe and sound. Indeed. She was wearing it in this very room earlier today. This case isn't going to end without a fight. Exposing the obvious contradictions in this testimony will be easy. But I fear that all that awaits us are further mysteries. Objection! Larry. That night, there was someone. Someone who lost a crystal sphere. There was? Who? Who was that stupid idiot? Miss Elise Doden, the mentor to a stupid idiot. The victim? I have a photo of her here. And on the end of her staff, you can see a familiar looking crystal sphere. Hey! That's my photograph! Give it back! Ouch! A crystal, a crystal sphere like that is quite easy to find. I have one just like it in my, on my brooch. They look nothing alike. In any case, please take a look at this. This is the victim's staff, found at the scene of the crime. Uh, the, the crystal sphere, it's gone. What? 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 Just what does this mean? If anyone jumped or flew across the bridge that night, it certainly was not Iris. After all, she was not wearing her hood. More importantly, the crystal sphere found at the crystal sphere found at the landing site was not hers either. That means the one who flew and dropped the sphere was the victim, Miss Elise Donim. A fool alongside another fool, on a fool's errand to reach a foolish conclusion. First of all, this sketch, which I prefer to call a scribble, is ridiculous. People cannot fly, thus it is rejected. You can't do that, I saw it with my own eyes! And this crystal sphere. This is nothing more than a red herring. You honestly believe that? Give it some salt, and I'm sure you'll realize it as well, my Edgeworth. Elise Stonem was in her room on the night of the murder. There was no reason for her to go to Dusky Bridge. Therefore, the sphere cannot be related to this case. That is all. <laughs> Miss Francisca von Karma. The only people who would accept that explanation are scatterbrains and clowns. Why are you pointing at me? The victim's crystal sphere was found near the bridge on the night of her murder. Yet you expect us to believe this has nothing to do with that case. That crystal sphere? It was probably thrown away at the, at the bridge after the murder. After the murder? There's blood on the crystal sphere, isn't there? This not only says that it was... <laughs> This naturally suggests that it was thrown away after the murder took place. The killer placed it there to throw the investigation off the scent. Which is the exact same reason why she, why he... <laughs> I can't talk right now. Which is the exact same reason that he drew that rid ridiculous sketch. Turned into like German Porky Pig there for a sec. What? You mean... I'm the killer? <laughs> All joking aside, just when did this crystal sphere appear at the foot of the ridge? 
Unless this can be proven in some way, I, I refuse to believe it, this is related to the case. She makes a valid point. There's no evidence that Elise Donim left Hazakura Temple that night. However, if somehow this crystal sphere can be proven to have been dropped before the victim was killed, then this case is going to transform into something else entirely. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth? I want your final opinion on the position of this on the disposition of this crystal sphere. If it is not related to this case, then this witness who you called will have will have been nothing more than a monumental waste of time. Prepare yourself for some very appropriate punishment, my Zedworth. Can I prove it? Can I prove that the crystal sphere was dropped before the murder took place? Can I prove it? That isn't the issue. To simply prove it, that's the only option. That's what he'd do. That's the way Phoenix Wright would do this. Your Honor, allow me to prove something to you. I will prove that this crystal sphere is a vital link to solving this case. You'll do what? Is that look in your eyes? You remind me of Phoenix Wright when he is cornered. That should come as no surprise. Because right now I am Phoenix Wright, and I am indeed cornered. I order you to present your evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Evidence that proves that the Crystal Sphere was indeed dropped before the murder. Okay. Alright, where's it at? Your response, Miss Von Karma? Birds of a feather flock together. Are you familiar with this phrase? Miles Edgeworth? I think one such bird is calling for its fellow now. Go, go, Edgy, do it! Prove it! Win! Win! He's cheering. It's as though I'm listening to the ominous croc calls of ravens. Uh, oh, whoops. I only skipped, accidentally skipped ahead in the walkthrough a little bit. One more chance, Your Honor. I can't turn back after coming all this way. The time of the murder and when the crystal sphere was dropped. I need to find proof that the latter happened first. This crystal sphere, it was half buried in the snow, correct? That's right. If it hadn't stopped snowing, then it would have been game over. The snow would have totally covered it. That's all I needed to hear from you, Larry. Your testimony makes one thing quite clear. What? When the crystal sphere was dropped, it was snowing, even if it were even if it was ever so slightly. Snowing? On the other hand, let us look at the scene of the murder. As proven earlier today, there's no snow on the victim's body. Uh. Therefore, the crystal sphere must have been dropped before the murder. V what? Order! Order! On the night of the murder, the victim did indeed go to Dusky Bridge. And there, something occurred that caused the staff's crystal sphere to come loose. What? What could that have been? This sphere... There's some blood on it, isn't there? Allow me to raise a certain possibility at this junction. The real crime scene was near the foot of Dusky Bridge. The murder didn't take place in the Hazakura Temple Courtyard? Only a fool would suggest such a foolish piece of absolute foolishness. Just who is the fool? And which part is so foolish, Miss Von Karma? Have you been paying any attention this whole time, Miles Edworth? The sister saw everything. She saw the victim being killed by the defendant in the Hazakura Temple Courtyard. 
That's not exactly true, now is it? To put it more precisely, what she saw was the murder weapon being removed from the victim's body. That's the same thing. No, it isn't. You said it yourself. Very little blood is actually lost. At the moment of the blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the most blood would be lost from a body, that would be the, when the blade is removed. If that statement is the truth, then Dusky Bridge could very easily be the scene of the murder. The murder weapon was not removed, thus there was no bleeding. You're, for you're forgetting one vital thing, my Zedworth. Elise Stonem's body was found in Hazakoa Temple. On foot it takes 15 minutes to travel from Dusky Bridge to Hazakoa Temple. You mean to suggest that someone carried the body all that way? I've made it this far. The only place to take this is to the end. But I just need to prove that my version of the events is also perfectly plausible. Now if the defense is ready, the court would like to have an explanation. Please show us the method by which the victim's body was carried to Hazakura Temple. Okay, now I present the snowmobile. On that snowy night, there's one way that a body could have been moved. The snowmobile. Ah. As we know, the snowmobile was used that night. It was explained as having been used to dispose of a murder weapon, but it could have been used to carry a body. Order! Order! This... this is completely unacceptable, Maya Zedworth. You've dug yourself into your own grave. What do you mean? The only one who could have used the snowmobile was the defendant. She's the one who moves the body. Doesn't that put the final nail in your coffin? <laughs> You're too late, Francisca von Karma. And in fact, the defense has proven something else entirely. We've shown that this case requ requires further investigation. What? Where was the victim Elise Donem really killed? If her body was moved, whatever for? And finally... Just what does this image mean? Do you even need to think about that? Such a creature would never see the truth, let alone describe it. This witness certainly sits on one of the lowest possible branches of humanity. However... He would never utter a lie that would hurt a girl with whom he is enamoured. He drew this, so it is something that actually happened. The defence stands firm on this point. E Edgy, thank you! That settles it, then. Cannot give a verdict under these circumstances. <laughs> I seem to have fulfilled my part in this. It is just as I thought. Francisca von Karma, you make a wonderful partner. Excuse me? There was one reason, and one alone, for me being here. To expose the darkness lurking in this case, then pass it on to right. Really? That's what this was all about? You could have just told me that from the very beginning. Then I wouldn't have had Franzi whipping me and all. Yeah! My Zedworth, I don't care what you were here to do. This was my chance to finally grind you under my heel. God, I wish that were me. A shame that your chance seems to have slipped you by. What a shame, Franzi! This is all your fault. Such a terrible witness. You're an affront to all the legal system stands for. I demand satisfaction. I cannot believe that the witness's testimony relates to an actual event. However, there has to be some sort of answer to the questions it raises. 
Have his words here today been the truth or lies? Next time we gather in this courtroom, those are the matters that shall be addressed. I'm counting on thorough investigations by both the defense and the prosecution. And with this, the rest is up to you, right? Court is now adjourned. Okay. So, uh, there's, there's a lot to unpack there. But, uh, yeah, I guess next episode we'll be back to playing as Phoenix. But if you enjoyed this video, then no further actions required on your part. And I think... Yeah, I think that's the last investigation of the whole trilogy next episode. Beginning next episode. It, it, yeah, it might be a two-part investigation, but either way, we'll see you then.